Hi there, Iris. Hi, sorry about that. My internet went out. Uh-oh, okay, no worries. Hi, Kat, how are you? Uh-oh. Hi, Kat. I don't know if Kat can hear us. And, oh, yeah, I don't think she can. I'll wave. Uh -huh. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm just super tired. That's oh, why no. the video isn't on. I look it's messy. okay. You don't have to show your face. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday morning. Yes. I'm, I'm a night owl, so this is, like, early for me, so. That's okay. We're glad you're here. Sorry, I'm eating. I'm so sorry if you can hear that. <laughs> no, we can't hear it. It's fine. We don't okay. even know because you're um, you're invisible. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so we'll get started in like just a few minutes. Uh, this is Nancy in over here. Over here. Hey, you? <laughs> I'm Nancy. Hi, Isabel. And down in the bottom is Kat. Okay. Isabel, are you in the same class as Kat? Um, I don't know if you guys are. I'm not too sure. The name doesn't ring a bell. Um, I'm going to double check, it. though. Yeah. <laughs> and Kat is muted. Yeah, Kat is muted right now. But I, I can let her know. Um, I think she's muted because her kids are joining her. Oh, okay. okay. But we can unmute her really quick to say hello, I think. Yeah, we're in different classes. Okay. We can unmute Kat. Yeah, I'm trying to, but. Okay. I can't, apparently. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Your daughter is so cute. Yeah, they are. All right, well, we can go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna, um, we are recording this meeting. So um, this will also be available as a resource and I'll be sending it out afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Sounds good. All right, um, so good to be with you. My name's Nancy McHenry. I'm one of the librarians at Napa Valley College. And I'm here to help you to find research resources online. So uh, the good news is there's a lot of great resources right off of the library page. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And I'm going to be sharing my screen and uh, giving you some tips. So what we'll be doing is uh, we'll be looking at primarily um, two academic databases, Academic Search Complete, as well as JSTOR. And I want to share with you a live guide that I made. Essentially, a live guide is a um, a pathfinder to information. And so I've created one specifically for this course in this book that will help guide you in your research. So let me go ahead and I'll share my screen with you. And we'll start off by going to the library page. So can everybody see the um, Napa Valley College library page right now? Yeah. Okay, oh. great. So what I'm going to do is go up, or excuse me, this is actually the main college page. I'm going to go up to the top to the library and click on the link. Mm -hmm. Let me try that again. That's interesting. Taking a few minutes here. This is reality. There we go. Okay, <laughs> it's just slow for whatever reason. And then there's one more click. So you can either click on um, McCarthy Library here, or you can just click on the picture. So this takes you to the library page. And we're going to scroll down. And you'll recognize, I think, this page. So we're going to focus today on databases. And we're also going to I'm going to show you a library guide. So um, maybe first uh, we'll start with the live guide just so you can see what, what's available. I'm going to click on this. And then the second link, 
whose names are unknown by Sonora Bab, English 120, Professor Iris Dunkel. This is the live guide. And so the first page is really devoted to the different topics and themes related to the book that you're currently reading. Okay. And um, then as we go across the top, the main academic databases that we're going to be looking at today are Academic Search Complete and JSTOR. And the reason that we're going to be using these databases is because they contain peer-reviewed journals. And that's important because peer-reviewed journals are um, journals that contain articles that are written by experts in the field. And uh, peer-reviewed means that other experts have read the articles and given their thumbs up um, prior to publication, that the articles meet a certain standard in terms of their accuracy and their scholarship. And you'll see on this page, uh, if you want to learn more about peer review, there's a wonderful little video that uh, you can watch that goes into the peer review process and how things are published. So I highly recommend it. It was uh, created by North Carolina State University librarians. And uh, so it's a good one uh, to learn more about peer review versus just regular uh, periodical articles. The next uh, tab across the top concerns the difference between keywords and subject headings. And um, this is something that I really want to uh, stress with you because it's very exciting in terms of being a researcher, knowing how you're searching for information is really important. And keyword searching is uh, the broadest kind of searching that you can do. Uh, it actually, um, when you type a word into a computer search engine, the, the computer doesn't know the meaning of the word, but it goes out and matches uh, word for word what you've typed in. So you can get some irrelevant hits when you do keyword searching. Uh, an example I always like to use is um, if you were in a biology class and you were writing about or doing research on pythons, the snake, and um, you mm -hmm. type that into your uh, search engine, you would get likely some irrelevant hits. You might get some books and uh, articles on Python computer programming language or Monty Python's Flying Circus. Um, so the way in which you can get around that and limit, eliminate um, those kinds of irrelevant hits is to use Library of Congress subject headings. And what those are, those are much more targeted ways to search. So when librarians put uh, Library of Congress subject headings into a, um, a database, they are using a controlled vocabulary. And once you know the Library of Congress subject heading on a very on a topic, you're able to find all the books and articles in a library. In this example here, um, if you were going to do research on drug abuse or chemical dependency, um, it would be important to know that the Library of Congress subject heading for that is uh, substance abuse. And so you might, you know, say, well, gee, how do I find the, um, the right Library of Congress subject heading? If you do some searching and you find an article, you can look at the Library of Congress subject headings for that article. Here's an example. Um, so American Indian business, just, this is just an example. Um, when, you, when you look at a database, you'll see some of the subject headings here. And um, so if you find the perfect article, you can use some of the subject headings for searching. Uh, here's, um, you know, business and economics is a subject heading. Uh, education is a subject heading. Social science slash ethnic studies is a Library of Congress subject heading. Indians of North America. So uh, that, that gives you a targeted way to search and I'll, I'll demonstrate that uh, when we get to the databases. The other way you can actually find a Library of Congress subject heading is to go to the Library of Congress itself. And um, so here's the URL for that, which takes you there. And um, you would type in a word like Native Americans 
and searching in the Library of Congress subject headings. And you'll see that when you get uh, a result back, it actually tells you, well, the correct Library of Congress subject heading for Native Americans is Indians of North America. So, um, so that's a helpful way to learn about the different Library of Congress subject headings. Okay. So, um, and let me scroll down just a little bit more. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll talk about, this is Academic Search Complete, which we'll go to shortly, but we can search for subject headings by pulling down the arrows here and uh, we can type in, you know, the correct, correct subject heading. Okay, this just gives us an example. Okay, so um, let me go back up here and uh, go across the top. Um, just wanna mention also that um, when you are doing research, uh, you wanna read as broadly and widely as you can on your topic and in effect do a literature review uh, that is going to enable you to um, learn as much as you can before you begin to think about how you wanna narrow your topic. You can also, as you're doing searching, um, you can put people's names, an author into a search engine to learn uh, more about them, learn about their affiliations, what's their background, you know, do they have an advanced degree in the topic that, uh, that you're looking at, they've written a particular article, you wanna learn more about them. And again, um, there's a wonderful uh, video that you can watch about how you enter into a scholarly conversation. So when you have some time, you definitely want to check that out. The last uh, section here of the live guide, just basically, um, I've given you examples of, um, we've just used two topics here, but uh, to give you some examples of some Library of Congress subject headings for different topics. In this case, the topic natural disasters. Uh, I did a subject heading search and I looked at the different kinds of articles that came up and so there are different ways in which uh, you can combine different subject headings in your searching, and I'll show you that, uh, so that you can target uh, your search more specifically. So for natural disasters, uh, many articles came up that talk about disaster relief, disaster resilience, drought management. And again, so these are terms that you can use for searching that will drill down a little bit more into your topics. Uh, agriculture and business in California, using that as an example. Uh, here's some additional Library of Congress subject headings uh, that uh, can be used. So um, this will be a little bit more clear, I think, as we go into the databases, uh, and I'll show you how you can uh, utilize this. Any questions so far just about the live guide? how to get to it or um, its purpose. How are y'all doing? Um, pretty good, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, okay. Um, Any questions so far, Isabel? No, questions. Yeah. no I'm, I'm, it's, I'm all good. Okay, good. All right. I was Great. gonna say really quickly, hello, Diana. We're glad that you're here. Oh, and good. I've, we have another person here. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to <laughs> Okay, so now I want to take you to um, Napa Valley College to the library page. Okay. So we're going to go um, to the databases now and uh, we're going to click here on the library. Click on the picture of the building or on the words library. Scroll down. And we're going to go into the databases. Okay. So to access the databases from home, you just need to use your web advisor, username and password. And here's a little bit of a tip. If you're already in Canvas and you've authenticated to Canvas, then you should be able to go to the library page and click on a database and have it open without having to authenticate. So uh, that's just a, a brief tip. 
I really like Academic Search Complete database. I think it's one of the best databases in terms of the coverage of subjects. And to get on the database, you either click here or you click over here. So either on the logo or on the <laughs> And then you can see that it's going to bring you a few things, which uh, is where you put in your web advisor, username, and password. And then what, if we're lucky, we'll get right into the database. Yeah, that's good. Ooh. A lucky yeah. day. <laughs> I know it's a good day, right? What one thing I wanted to mention here, guys, that um, I'm just gonna interject really quick because this is something that I've found is that if you are logged into um, our class into Canvas, mm -hmm. you can't log in here at the same time. It'll it'll give you an error message a lot of the time. So just oh. unlock log out of our class first. Okay, that's great. Great to know. So. Uh, I love the screen of the EBSCOhost databases. It's very clean, almost like you're searching on a Google screen. Uh, there's a lot of white space, and you can tell that you're searching the database. Its name is in green right here. And the first thing that I like to do is I scroll down and I click full text. Now notice you also have the option of clicking scholarly peer-reviewed journals, which you can do or you can search broadly to start off with, with full text. Um, so Professor Dunkel, do you want uh, students to limit their results strictly to peer reviewed and full text? Or um, would you also consider other periodical articles for the purpose of the course? Um, no, they can also look at other periodicals as long as they have um, the, the author, they've looked up who the author is and mm -hmm. made sure that it, that person is an expert in the area that they're writing about. Okay, wonderful. So the other thing that I like to do is I like to go straight away to the advanced search function. Do you all see that there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So when we click on that, okay. Now, um, I'm gonna also bring to your attention this little select a field area. And I'm going to click on the arrow. And when I do that, you can see text, all text. That's a keyword search. Author is an author search. Title is a title search. But here, subject terms, that's a subject heading search. And so that's what, um, you know, knowing those subject headings, this is where it can come in really handy. So if we were going to, for example, do a search on, um, let's say, agriculture, right? And um, so that is a Library of Congress subject. And it's also a keyword, but we can also combine it with um, another su subject term, um, land use. Okay, so I know that land use is a Library of Congress subject heading, and I'm using the keyword agriculture, mm -hmm. and I'm using uh, the subject heading land use to, fr to try to find articles on uh, agriculture, land use. And I can also, if I wanted to, put in the geographic word California, because the book, of course, takes place in California. So that's now gonna be a keyword California, land use, a subject heading, and um, again, a keyword, agriculture. And let's see what we come up with. So I'm gonna hit the search, okay. And uh, what comes up are some different articles. And I just wanna point out to you um, in the section here, uh, tells us who the article is by, gives us um, a date, and page numbers. And here are the Library of Congress subject headings here in the middle. So this article, this first one, Urban Impact on Agriculture in Santa Clara County. Oops. And what happened there? Okay, let me go back. Um, so that article is an academic journal. And these are the Library of Congress subject headings. Um, we can click on 
PDF full text to read the article. We can also click on the, the topic, the title here, excuse me. So um, that shows us a little bit more information about the article. To actually look at the PDF, I can click here, or as I said before, I can click, whoops, go back, sorry. I can click PDF here. I think I need to share my screen with you. Are you guys seeing a gray screen right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me um, let me stop the share and go over. Okay, is it? Are you able to see that urban impact on agriculture in Santa Clara County? Mm -hmm. No. Isabel, can you see that screen or no? Um, yeah, I can see the screen. It's just the uh, document hasn't come up yet. Okay. So let me um, let me do this. Now we see it. Mm -hmm. Now you can see it. Okay, good. Now I'm hoping that I can see it. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay. So um, this article is um, very typical of a academic journal. You can see, oh, it keeps flipping here. Uh, let's see. Back again, trying to um, share my screen so that I can see it. Um, That's weird that you can't see it. Yeah. It stays for a second. Um, this is by, can you see that now? Mm -hmm. By Paul Griffin and Ronald Chatham. Yes, you guys can see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, so this is a typical um, academic journal article. It's a 15 page article. You can see the up at the top, uh, there's some different icons. Uh, there is an icon of a printer. There's an icon of an envelope. Do you all see that? Mm -hmm. So that allows you to print the article or to click on the envelope and email the article to yourself. And uh, this tells us that these two particular researchers are from Stanford. Okay. And let me see if I can scroll down here. Um, Uh, so as we look through the article, again, um, it's going to have charts, it's going to have maybe some technical information. Um, these articles may take a while to read, um, and you can scroll through and see the different references that they've used to write the article. You can, as you're doing your um, surveying of an article, you can read the, the titles of the different sections of the scholarly journal article. And uh, then here at the bottom, there should be a list of references. Early picture of uh, Santa Clara County. Uh, actually, they have put most of their references into footnotes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you'll see in, um, in scholarly journal articles, at the very end of the article will be a list of many different references. Okay. So, um, so then you have the option here, you can email the article to yourself. See if this is going to show what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you able to see this? Invite yes. people by email? Yeah. Okay, great. So you can email the article to yourself and you can also print the article if you need to. Okay. Oops. So let me go back to my screen. Sorry, this is a little bit clunky on uh, sharing of the screens, but let's go back to some additional articles here. Okay. Um, this next article, uh, Special Cropland in California. Uh, is from Geographic Review, um, and let's see here. This is from 2003. 
Um, let's scroll down a little bit more. So um, you can get the idea that um, you can locate different articles um, and uh, click on them and review them to see if it's going to be useful to you. Let's go back to our search. Um, and uh, let's just change it to uh, a topic that may be of interest related to the book, dust bowl. And so in our field here, we're going to do a keyword search for dust bowl. And notice when we type in dust bowl, it gives us some additional options for how to narrow our search. And uh, then um, let's take a Library of Congress subject heading or uh, here. Um, and uh, let's try um, farmers. Okay. So Dust Bowl, keyword search, and subject heading search farmers, keyword search California. Um, let me mention what, what's happening here is um, the computer sees keyword Dust Bowl and farmers. So it's going to look for articles about the Dust Bowl that includes articles about farmers and California. If we, ch these are called Boolean operators. If we change the Boolean operator to or, then we're going to get a wider or a broader um, range of hits back because it will find articles about the Dust Bowl or about farmers and California. You can even do or California. So um, this would give us a really broad um, uh, number of uh, articles back. Uh, but if we want to narrow our search, we use the AND linking for um, the Boolean operators because it says only find articles about dust bowls that includes farmers and California. Okay. So we can, we can uh, change the parameters on our search here by using these uh, Boolean operators as well. So let's search for dust bowl subject heading farmers, California and see what we come up with. Okay, not much there. Interesting. Let's take out California. So I'm removing California, we only got one search result back. Okay. So now we have 12 articles uh, on Dust Bowl and Farmers. I'm just gonna scroll down. This one is from um, Time Magazine 2019, The Dust Bowl Down Under, which has to do with Australia. The New Dust Bowl from Time Magazine 2002, uh, Droughts Crop, Drought Tolerance of Plants, Farmers, The Drought Effect on Livestock in the United States. It's a periodical. And let's take a look here further. The Great American Dust Bowl. That's a review of a book. So you don't want to necessarily use a book review for this project. Is that right, um, Professor yes. Dunkel? Yeah, right. I usually have them mark that box on the left. Right. So that it says no um, book reviews. Okay, right. Or like and, I make sure that that one's not checked. And newspapers I usually leave out as well. Okay, so if we wanted to just have academic journals, of which there are four, we could select that, right? And then it'll just bring up those uh, four academic journal articles. Okay. So here's a selection of different articles. Um, and if so, we can limit to full text over here as well. You can also limit to the publication date. So you have some other ways to limit your searches as well. Okay. And again, um, to read the article in its entirety, you click on PDF full text. Okay. 
Okay. And are you guys seeing a gray screen? Yes. Do you see um, do you see the article? No. There we go. Are you guys seeing this article come up? Yes. Yeah. Can, can you see crop insurance and bad faith protection for Americans farmers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And uh, so we can uh, scroll down. This is talking about the Great Depression and tumultuous times in American history, evoking many vivid memories and images. And um, what's nice is this is a great, a great quote here. Cultivators of the earth are the most valuable citizens. Um, sometimes it can be really wonderful to, um, to use a quote as a hook in your writing. Um, as the authors have done in this particular academic journal. That's a very a good quote from President Thomas Jefferson. And, um, and then we can see here that um, this talks about, um, these are the different uh, references here down below. So let's scroll through the article quickly. It starts with an introduction and uh, contains a lot of footnotes which are always always good to read. You know, you can find a lot of good information in the footnotes. And uh, so this is a long article. This is from Creighton Law Review. And, uh, and again, this is not unusual to find a really long article uh, as an academic journal article. Sometimes, you know, you might have to read an article a couple of times, two, three times, um, print it out or um, you know, you can also highlight online um, and, um, and then um, make sure that you understand it. Um, it, can, it can take a lot of time to read through these articles. I just want to show you, it's quite a long one. It's a 30, 35 page article. Okay. All right. <coughs> Sorry. Let me go back, stop, share. Um, so this is, um, this is academic search complete. And um, again, you can try different types of searching, uh, different keywords and uh, different subject headings and see what results you come up with and you can vary it. And remember, you can use uh, the all text for keywords or just leave it as it is for select a field, that'll give you a keyword search and your subject uh, searches can be uh, tailored here. Okay. So, so I want you to just know that you, that gives you some opportunity to um, adjust your search as well as using the different Boolean operators. Dust Bowl and Farmers will bring all articles that include mention of farmers and the Dust Bowl, or would bring articles about the Dust Bowl or articles about farmers. It might also include articles about the Dust Bowl and farmers, um, but um, you can tailor your search here. You can also tailor your search by choosing academic journals, by limiting your results to full text, by limiting by publication date, you can vary that as well. Okay. Um, all right. Any questions so far on using Academic Search Complete? How are you guys doing with with that? Do you think you can get on and uh, and construct a search, an advanced search? Maybe we could see if um, anyone has questions about their specific topic that they're searching under. Sure. And if you can't, if you're on mute and you can't talk, you can also send them through chat and I'll, I'll uh, report them out. Sure. Does anybody want to come up with a topic and we'll do a search on Academic Search Complete and see what we can find? Mm. Are 
Are you guys um, still Can we try uh -huh. um, global warming? Global warming, okay. And is there a particular aspect of global warming that you're interested in knowing about? Uh, the cause and effects to the uh, um, global economy. Okay. Now, I'm not sure that global economy is a Library of Congress subject heading, so I'm just going to change that to a keyword search. Okay. But I do know that global warming is a Library of Congress subject heading. So I'm going to change that one to a subject heading and global economy. And then let's do a search and see what we come up with. Okay. so. There's 1,679 results, and it's showing us the first 10. And uh, the first one is an academic journal article. So what's so unsustainable about the global economy? And this article talks about international competition, global warming, equality, and economic competition. So that might be a good one to look at. Um, this next one is the problem that's global warming. Um, doesn't quite mention um, global economics, so let's skip over that one. But I'm just scrolling down to get an idea of what came up in our results. Global warming as a byproduct of the capitalist treadmill of production and consumption, the need for an alternative global system. So that's, that's an interesting topic. Maybe we want to take a look at uh, reimagining re global climate change. Okay, global warming and the transformation of the global economy. Okay. There's a, there's a book title that you might want to write down. Okay. Can you see that there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That that might be one you want to take a look. At. Uh, can capitalism survive climate change? Another interesting, another interesting topic. Uh, so let me go up here. Let's take a look at the first one. What is, so what is so unsustainable about the global economy? And let's take a look at the PDF for that. And let me reshare my screen with you. So go back down here. So here is our article. Can you all see that now? Yeah. Yes. So the person that wrote this article, Mark Swilling, has a PhD and he's professor at the Sustainability Institute and the School of Public Leadership at a university that I can't pronounce, Stellenbach, it looks like. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit easier to read. Um, so again, you know, when you click on these, you want to look at some of the, maybe read the introduction of the article and look at the different sections of the article. There's one on global warming, so it's going to talk about it. Mm. It's going to talk about uh, oil peak, uh, inequality, urban majority. And as we scroll down, this came out in March of 2012, so it's a little bit dated. And the conclusion here. And it gives you a link to the references. Mm -hmm. All right. So if this was an article that you were interested in, uh, you can email it to yourself. You can print it. OK. OK. All right, let me stop share, come back.
go back to our results. So um, you can look through these different articles. Uh, there are several pages of articles that you can then click on and uh, see if you can find uh, some articles that are particularly going to be useful to you in your research on global warming and the global economy. And again, uh, as you're looking at articles, boy, if you find a great one, look at the Library of Congress subject headings for that article, and those will give you additional ways to search. Yes. Okay. So, you know, economic competition and so forth. Um, let me ask, um, so that was your topic, Kat. Yeah. Um, Isabel, did you have a topic? That you wanted uh, to take yeah, actually. So my topic is global warming with sharks. Oh, okay. Um, and one of the hardest things to, I guess, like, do is finding the correct key terms. Mm -hmm. um, just because right now the research that I'm doing, I'm trying to look at um, the biology of like a shark's sense of smell, because I found an interesting article about how. Um, CO2 is affecting um, a shark's capability to sense out predators and even prey in the water, mm, okay. um, which has an effect on their bi biology, of course. So I was like, that's pretty interesting, but it's just hard finding the right key terms to search right. to find effective results. Okay. So if I understand you, you're saying you're looking for information on sharks and their ability to smell. Mm -hmm. uh, with the with global warming taking up taking place and its effect on sharks yeah okay so I guess we could start off really broadly by um, searching using the subject heading search global warming and then using the keyword sh search sharks and just see in a very general way what kinds of articles come up and I'm going to do that now Okay, so let's see. Um, everyone out of the water, Newsweek article. Um, effects of climate induced changes in parasitism, predation, and predator predator interactions on reproduction and survival of an Arctic marine bird. Mm. Okay, that's interesting that it's not on sharks. Uh, let's take a look here. Arctic warming, environmental, human, and security implications. Um, fear for the future, global warming, climatology. Hmm. It's do, you think there's not... like, do you think there's like a certain like academic word I'm supposed to be using instead of shark and that's why I'm not coming up with the best search results? That could be. That could be. Um, if there was, if we knew the scientific name of sharks, um, that might change our results. Um, I have a suggestion, um, Isabel. Sure. You've come up with some really interesting, uh, you know, the the terminology in your actual thesis, like um, the in, what is it, the increase of acidification, and mm -hmm. um, and uh, so maybe getting some of the um, like adding in. Um, like ocean acidification, acid, sorry, I can't talk this morning. Acid, the, can someone say that word for me? Acidification. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that's why I teach online. Um, <laughs> um, as the subject term, like one of the subject terms. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe as a first and then searching under sharks mm -hmm. um, or sharks first and then ocean acidification. Okay. Sure. Um, so we can take out global warming. Yeah, because it's really it's what's really affecting them is that is that right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Word I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because whenever I like would search it, I would have to like do like okay first what causes um, ocean acidification and then how does that and then do a separate search for how that like affects sharks in their environment. Right. Okay. Um, and sharks will just be a keyword, but I, we'll try ocean acidification and see what we get. 
So ocean acidification and um, sharks. Okay, so yeah, so it is a Library of Congress subject heading, which is cool. Um, Sorrow Beneath the Sea, that's a periodical article about uh, marine overfishing and ocean acidification. Okay. Black Sea Marine Ecosystems. Hmm. Not seeing much about sharks, but um, let's just take a look at this. I do not know. Oops. No, they're not going to be sharks, I don't think, in the Black Sea, but I might be wrong. Okay, so not much. Um, what about the sorrow beneath the sea? That one looks interesting, but you're right, there's no... It does look like an interesting article. Okay, so let's take a look here. Oh, there we go. Um, my children, the world over, my daughters love turtles. They can, okay, at once incongruous and graceful, they connect us to the world of 15 million years ago when very similar turtles swam alongside megatooth sharks. Um, with an ever accelerating tide of human impact, the oceans have changed more in the last 30 years than in all of human history. And uh, large animals such as whales, dolphins, sharks, um, as fishing and hunting spread in waves across the face of the planet. And then we've got a, I like how it's a specific um, type of shark, the white tip sharks, mm -hmm. or the sawfish. Right. Um, so here, here's a researcher, Lauren, a graduate at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, unearthed telling example of shifting baselines. Okay, so... Um, So this is talking about uh, chemical and industrial pollutants in our rivers and oceans affecting the ocean chemistry. And toxin talks about, this is a nice, interesting, well, it's not a nice statistic, it's an alarming statistic. The oceans have absorbed about 30% of the carbon dioxide released by human activity since pre-industrial times, mainly from fossil fuel burning, conversion of forests and swamps to cities and agriculture, and cement production. So, so this, okay, and so here it goes into ocean acidification. So the present increase in ocean acidity is not just unprecedented in our times, it's a rare event in the history of the planet. So this article would be, be useful. Um, oh, yeah. Scroll down to the bottom. Let's see if there's any sources cited. Yeah, this is coming out of Newsweek, so. Okay. So yeah, it so it's it's less not, yeah, it's not a uh, an academic journal, but it does give you some good statistics. That there mm -hmm. could be those could be just uh, great for integrating into your paper. And you could look up um, the scientists that were mentioned in this study and the, you know, the scripts. Yeah, and see if the, the sources they, this particular um, author used were academic. Well, and you can also see if they lead you to more sources. It's kind of like a treasure hunt. Like this article can lead you to so much more. Okay. Um, so you always mine your good sources for more, um, for more sources, right? Okay. <laughs> right. Let's go back. And it's a, you know, what you, when you get to this point in your, in your research, um, Isabel, because you've gotten such a focused thesis, mm -hmm. um, you're actually in a good spot. That's why it's so hard to find good research, mm -hmm. but that's where you really have to use all these skills that we've been talking about, you know, about um, finding more, more like searching in several databases and yeah. searching like not being discouraged if this only brings up four like try different combinations and put yeah. sharks first put you know what I mean like switch it up and um, start seeing what that finds because it'll wield different results every single time. Yeah I've noticed that because every time I put something in different it's always different I'm like great. Right. 
and and also because you have a scientific sort of biological scientific topic, uh, the FASAB journal. Uh, is a journal of biology, um, and we subscribe to it as an on online source. Uh, so the FASAB journal would be a good place to look for um, uh, additional articles. And Could you um, show her how to get there? I certainly can. Awesome, because I think we, we only have like about like five more minutes. So I want to make sure. our database here. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's go back. Sorry. Let me just go back in from here. Okay, so we're on the database page and we want to scroll down to the FASAB journal. Just want to mention too that at the very end of all of these listings of databases, there's actually a chart, might be even a little bit easier to use. Um, I'll just show you, it's down here um, for all the different types of databases. Uh, green file would be a good one, Isabel, for you mm -hmm. for your topic, as well as, um, as I mentioned, the FASAB journal, which I just scroll past. Yeah. Okay. So it should hopefully, yeah. Okay, so um, it's brought to you by Napa Valley College. So we are um, in this particular journal and um, you can do a search here on, um, oops, ocean acidification and sharks. You can try that um, and see if we get anything. No results. Okay, let's try advanced search. Um, just try that. Let's see if we come up with anything at all. Yeah. Okay, so these are going to be more of the scientific type articles. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. So, um, yeah, so the problem we're seeing is the problem I've been having while doing research is that I just get some like um, articles that just don't pertain to my topic at all. And so I always have to like figure out what's a better thing to like type in. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes it's just a matter of uh, hit and miss, you know, you, you try some different databases and see what, what you're able to pull up. Um, but when you find a great article, um, again, try to try to find those, um, those good Library of Congress subject headings to help you. Okay. Okay. Well, and I'm you can that. always, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. You can always um, email uh, or do a Zoom one-on-one -on -one conference with um, Nancy as well, or yeah. with myself. Like we will, if you are getting stuck and going in circles, that's totally a possibility. Right, absolutely. So we can, uh, we can work with you more individually um, and uh, spend the time on your particular topic. Mm -hmm. um, I did wanna let you know also that we have an ebook collection um, and uh, that is an online database as well. Um, just to uh, point out that that's uh, another uh, option for uh, finding books at a time when, um, when we're somewhat limited to our physical collection. Mm -hmm. 
So um, the EBSCOhost ebook collection is a good one um, to look for um, for books online. Um, let's try ocean acidification. I don't know if there's any books on that. Ocean yep. acidification, elements and considerations. Um, so yeah, so. Uh, you might want to look through these books, go into the full text, look uh, at the, um, the index, see if there's anything on sharks uh, mm -hmm. that may help you. Okay. Okay. So you want to be sure you knew about the, the online um, ebook databases as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Because books are good because I'm dealing with like, you know, the biology of sharks, which we already know a decent amount about but then I'm also trying to find newer stuff that right. apparently we don't know so much about so it's a challenge yeah, yeah. Um, before, um, I, I just wanted to ask Diana if you had any specific uh, questions I don't want you to not get to ask a question I know we're nearing the end of our time oh no I don't have any questions right now okay well we're so glad that you're here Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I know we're near the end, but Diana, did, did you want us to uh, execute a search on, your, on a topic that you're thinking about? Oh, no, it's totally okay. Okay, what, do, what are you thinking about writing about? Uh, immigration. Immigration, oh, okay, okay. Um, so let me just, let's just see if we have any uh, eBooks on that. And it's immigration in the United States, correct, Diana? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah. So it looks Lots like there's a, there's a thousand uh, books. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot, showing us the first 10. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's also some videos that you can take a look at. And uh, yeah. And I would just say, um, when it comes to the videos for any of these, just be careful of bias, you know, like mm -hmm. we would in any other source. Okay. Yeah, so there's there's quite a bit in terms of ebooks. Looks, looks like that'll be a good source as well as using the, um, the online um, academic search complete. Um, I didn't show you guys JSTOR, but um, but it's very easy to use in terms of another database. We have the Humanities Social Science Edition. We don't have the Science Edition of JSTOR. JSTOR stands for Journal Storage. Uh, so, you know, uh, the one topic having to do with sharks and ocean acidification, uh, you wouldn't want to use JSTOR because it doesn't okay. have the, the science topics. But for immigration uh, and um, global warming, I think, um, I mean, there may be some articles on global warming in JSTOR, so that you could certainly try that. Okay, um, I guess we're just about nearing the end of our time here. Um, and so um, wanted to see if you guys had any questions or um, how you're feeling about starting your research. Good. Ready? question mark uh -huh. <laughs> you're doing great everyone on this call is actually doing really well and they're uh, the fact that they showed up for this is pretty awesome so yeah and then um, I do have a quick question for you dr. Dunkel um, so you want our like main like uh, research assignments now to have us go to a tutor is that correct ideally yeah as we move forward um, I just because of the availability um, I wanted to make sure that was possible, but yes, um, turn in, give yourself time to turn in your um, assignments to a tutor, either through the writing center or through Smart Thinking. Okay. Um, yeah, because I, I, I talked to Smart Thinking already about my thesis and stuff like that, because I wanted okay. to make sure it was argument argumentative. God, I can't even say that. Um, it's okay. This is the was, place where it's safe to not say words right. <laughs> I was um, worried about, you know, my thesis not being like as good as it could be. Um, so. Yeah, great. And I, I, I think that I, 
I don't know which class I finished all my grading in yesterday. If I think it was, it was your, mine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's yeah, the next one is coming. Um, mm -hmm. the end of today, hopefully. Um, but the uh, hopefully that feedback gave you some um, some details on how to make it even more specific. But I think you're you're really getting there with your thesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just hard to get like super specific because it's like I don't know why it's so hard finding research about sharks. I really don't. <laughs> It's, you know, the reality is um, we have limited, you know, our databases are great mm -hmm. and we have an amazing resource here, but when um, it, it is different at every institution you're at. So mm -hmm. if you were at, say, Sonoma State, you'd have access to even more material. If you were at Harvard, you'd have access to even more material. It really is just, um, it's surprising. Like a lot mm -hmm. of people think, oh, it's the same everywhere. It's it's not. Like you have more money to buy database subscriptions, right, at Harvard mm -hmm. versus at Napa Valley College. So yeah, um, that's why I asked if I could use the San Francisco database yeah. while I could, because totally can. <laughs> uh, the other thing that just comes to mind, Isabel, because your topic is so um, narrow and and in, and focused in a good way would be to find out who are who's doing research on sharks. Who mm -hmm. are the zoologists and oceanographers and so forth that are well known in the field of shark research. Mm -hmm. And you could do that, you know, by going to like Google Scholar or Google Books or just doing a search on a search engine, you know, um, top shark researcher United States. And then you can see if you can find anything written by that research. Right. Um, so that would be another way to go. Um, okay. Because as uh, Professor Dunkel said, you know, we are somewhat limited in our databases. They're, they're good, but they're not perfect. And uh, so we really have to be as resourceful as we can. Yeah, I'm not blaming the databases at all. No, no, um, that's fine. It's just that I picked, <laughs> I picked, um, unfortunately for me, I picked a, um, marine animal that is just even hard to like keep in captivity so yeah. it's, it's a fascinating it's, topic though i really think yeah. you're gonna you know once you find the right resources you're gonna be fine so because yeah. i'm i'm having fun honestly it makes me almost want to like um do more um stuff related to marine biology so that's fun that's <laughs> cool praying. that's what college is all about <laughs> yeah finding new things right um, re-entering my shark phase. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That's, that's very fun. Well, you guys, I gotta, I gotta um, bring us to a close because we're over an hour and um, I don't want to, you know, that's right. That's right. That's how I feel. <laughs> Happy spring break, everyone. And thank you for showing up and use Nancy as a resource. You can see she's really good at what she does. Yeah, and that lib guide, that lib guide, I always call it lib guide. <laughs> I'll post that in our Canvas class uh, later today, so you'll have access to that really easily. Okay. But I just want to thank you, Nancy, from the bottom of my heart oh, for you're welcome for doing this for us and um, for making us have a thank virtual you. library. Yeah, I'm glad to help. This was a lot of fun. Great, and, uh, and I learned a lot too. Great. And again, don't don't hesitate to contact me through email. Um, uh, let me know if you would like to um, schedule a meeting and have some individual work, or you can just look on the library page uh, for when the um, the conferences are available with the librarian. It's myself and Amy Catania, who are the two librarians that uh, provide virtual reference. So, mm -hmm. and Amy's really wonderful as well. Uh, so. Um, so I would encourage you to, you know, come join us for an individual meeting. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. All, All right, great. guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll see you guys online. All right. Okay.